playing for nine million US dollars in the desert. The first of the Rolex series events of the 2023 schedule starts this week on the DP World Tour. And breaking news here, there is a player back, one of my favorite players, back after 11 months. Now, mate, guys, make sure you subscribe to this channel for all the latest breaking news. And to never miss a video, make sure you hit that bell button too. Okay, big talking points before we get into who I think is going to win the first Rolex series and really put a marker down for who's going to be one of the best players of the year. We need to talk about two huge things. The last event in Hawaii, serious, serious winner here. And what a final round. And the Hero Cup, GB and I versus Europe. And I think this, I know they're playing against each other, but really lays a marker down for Europe's Ryder Cup hopes. First off, PGA Tour news. Sony Open in Hawaii. Now, what a place to play a tournament in January. I mean, we're in Manchester in the rain, if you watch my YouTube videos. Absolutely freezing. Okay, so this is all you need to know. So heading into the final round, Siwoo Kim was actually three shots behind. He claimed the title over Hayden Buckley. Now, I actually thought this was really interesting. Hayden Buckley was going for his first ever PJ Tour win. Life-changing moment, not only monetary-wise, but you're probably getting the Masters, getting all the big majors for this year. So seriously life-changing. And Siwoo Kim hadn't won since January 2021. So both of them had a lot to play for. So going into the final round, Siwoo Kim was chasing him down. Now, this is what I call a bit of a swashbuckling back and forth, birdie par, birdie par, until we came to the final few holes. So heading into the final few holes, the experience of Kim showed through. Birdie in the 17th, and not actually just birding it, chipping in. A proper, proper clutch moment. Now, this drew Buckley and Kim together. Heading into the final 18th hole, even more clutch, Kim managed to birdie that hole, and Buckley had to get up and down out the bunker to force a playoff, or make an eagle to win outright. Unfortunately, he didn't get up and down and leaving Kim to signal his first victory since 2021. What an event. Now, just going to say right here, I would definitely, if I won that event, got my Hawaiian shirt that I was given on my stag do, actually find a use for it and wear it as I collected that trophy. I know that's a bit corny, but 100% I would have done that. PJ Tour News, let's now get into DP World Tour Hero Cup. The Hero Cup. Now, I've not seen too much about this actually over the past few years, but it's definitely an event that I am excited about heading into a Ryder Cup year. I think it gives us a bit more of an advantage and just basically puts us in some good prep. Find out some partners, who plays well with who, and who's a good matchup in a match play clutch scenario. Okay, so players. These are the players for the GBNI team. We had Shane Lowry, Tommy Fleetwood, captain. Tyrrell Hatton, Seamus Power, Matt Wallace, Callum Shinkwin, Jordan Smith, Ewan Ferguson, what a guy, uh, Robert McIntyre, what a guy, and Richard Mansell. Now, first thing that's coming to my mind there, that is a very, very young team. And heading up the team for Europe was Francesco Molinari as their captain. Mollywood up against each other. So their team was made up of Thomas Peters, Antonio Rosner, Nicholas Hogard, Thomas Detry, Adrian Moronk, Victor Perez, Seb Stracker, Alex Noren, and Guido Migliosi. Again, I'm just thinking young talent. European golf right now looks in a strong place. Now, all you need to know is this. Francesco Molinari's team claimed a 14.5 to 10.5 victory in Abu Dhabi over Tommy Fleetwood's team. Definitely the Mollywood side of the friendship won there. Now, there is some big things I think about this. So, noticeable performances from GB and I players. And this is actually really exciting me because going into the 2023 season, we've not seen too much of Tommy Fleetwood. But he managed to put himself out there and won 3-2 and two over Thomas Peters. Now, this is in the final part of the tournament, the singles. Now, that is something that excites me because we've not seen too much of him for the last six months, even last season. For his standards, it wasn't very good. But this man, we can't not talk about him. Tyrrell Hatton, he had the biggest victory for the entire week, winning five 
and four. Now, if that doesn't put a statement down, something does right there. But let's get into this. The fact of we have a strong European GB&I team. I'm actually very, very excited heading into the Ryder Cup. And as we get closer to it, and as we see the standings change, here currently are the standings of who are the automatic picks heading into the Ryder Cup this year in September. Now, one thing I'm going to say is that I'm going to call it right now. We are going to wipe the floor with them in Italy. I know that's bold. I know that's probably shameless. But 100%, we are going to wipe the floor with them. In last week's video, I was talking about Live Golf and the introduction of Good Good. Now, a lot of you were like, Alex, that is an interesting take. I can really get behind that. But this comment right here from Chuck, he said, I hope it doesn't. Uh, I feel it will steer golf into the same direction as YouTube boxing games. Fun to watch, but not the real McCoy. Now, I get that, 100%. I actually watched a KSI fight um, on Saturday night with one of my mates um, and we were watching it and we're like, yeah, this is good. It's pretty interesting once in a while, but it's not watching the likes of Joshua, the likes of Klitschko. It's not It's not like watching the greats of the game. It was almost like a bit like, <laughs> look at them, the boxing, rather than, oh my. And yeah, I feel like you're right, but let me just justify like my comment on the fact that the good, good players would be playing. I was meaning in the capacity of like the pro-am, maybe as a special guest, and as a way of getting more eyes on the game. And I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I 100%, in terms of the broader picture of golf, the more people watching golf in whatever capacity is only got to have a good effect. I'm sorry if you don't agree. But 100%, I think that is the case. $9 million. That is a serious amount of money. These Rolex events obviously are designed to get the best players in the world playing all at the same time in one week. So this week is the Abu Dhabi HSBC Championship. And it sort of, for me, marks the start of the 2023 season. I know we've had a few events, obviously at the Hero Cup, we've had some events in Mauritius, we've had some events in South Africa, but for me, this is when the big boys start to come out and play. We've got the likes of Patrick Reed playing, we've got uh, Lee Westwood, we've got Tommy Fleetwood, we've got Till Hatton, we've got all these big players making their mark, and this signifies the start of the season. Also, back after 11 months, is Alex Levey. Now, he's actually a player that I would say either is... A Marmite player, in terms of personality, um, when you sort of see him, sometimes you might think, mm, a bit arrogant, a bit of this, a bit of that. But actually, a player that blows hot and cold, when he's on, he is seriously on. And it'll be interesting to see, actually, will he hit the ground running? Because he's only going to come back if he feels like he can win. Obviously, big money event, he's back after 11 months, and it's good to have him back on the European Tour, heading into a Ryder Cup year. Now, my picks for this week... I'm actually excited about these picks. I've already named them twice today. I'm going to go with two. I know that's sitting on the fence, and I know I should pick an outright winner, but I can't. So I'm going to go with either, sorry, I know two people, Tommy Fleetwood or Till Hatton. Okay, let me explain this. Till Hatton, firstly, because when that guy's playing well, and he's won that final round in turn five and four in the Hero Cup in the singles, Five and four. So you've obviously got to be playing some very, very good golf and been dropping a lot of birdies. Okay? When that guy's playing good, he hits a purple patch. We've seen this in previous seasons when he's won in sort of like six starts twice. So I honestly believe he is going to be one to watch this week, along with Tommy Fleetwood, which hopefully some good shots, some good performances in the Hero Cup will actually give him some confidence back in his game and be able to transfer that into a good week this week. So fingers crossed, they're, two, my two, my, they're my two players for this week and the first Rolex event of the season. Hopefully you heard it here first. And if you didn't, get down in the comments and think, well, okay, is Alex right? Is he wrong? Who is going to be the winner of the first Rolex event series of 2023? Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Do not forget to subscribe, turn that bell on for breaking news and lots more content here on Bat9 Films.